All right, uh, welcome back to the hottest seminar. Um, this week we have Kim Nguyen, who's going to talk about directed univalence in simplicial sets. All right, uh, so first of all, thanks um, to your organizers for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity uh, to talk about this. So this is um, joint work with uh, Denis Shah Suzinski. And right, so this is about direct and universe in some sets. And our motivation uh, for this is to think of infinity categories as a, a semantic interpretation of direct attack theory. And so on one hand, maybe find out something about direct attack theory uh, by studying this, uh, infinity categories. And on the other hand, um, trying to use methods from attack theory uh, to say something about infinity, uh, something interesting about um, infinity categories. So today uh, I'd like to talk about diagonal univalence. So uh, let's have a comparison uh, with homotopy type theory and univalence in, in homotopy type theory. Right, so uh, in homotopy type theory, types uh, have an interpretation as infinity group points. On the other hand, in, in direct type theory, uh, uh, the interpretation should be uh, infinity categories. Then uh, on, the, on one side, we have the identity type, which is modeled by uh, the path space of uh, uh, infinity group point. Whereas uh, in direct type theory, we should have a, a home type, so a type of non-invertible paths. And this should be uh, modeled by the mapping space of an infinity category. Uh, then the universe, uh, you know, the kind of theory is modeled um, by, uh, I'll explain this notation later, but so this is supposed to be the infinity group height of uh, small infinity group heights. And uh, what we should expect in direct type theory, uh, that's, uh, uh, we should expect the infinity category of infinity categories, I'm, I'm calling this Q um, here. So this is supposed to be the, uh, eventually the infinity category of infinity gets. So then uh, universe, uh, you know, the type theory says that, uh, well, we have a map uh, from the path space. So in semantics, we have a map from the path space to the object of uh, equivalences, and that's supposed to be uh, an equivalence itself. And then uh, this direct univalence, uh, that's what I want to explain in detail. So the goal for today uh, is to uh, show that direct univalence holds in uh, some little sets. Okay, so to talk about this, I, I'll start off with uh, vibrations. So this is um, the zoo of vibrations that you can define in a uh, simplicial set that's not exhaustive, but so this kind of models the different kinds of type dependency uh, that you can see in simplicial sets. In the model of simplicial sets, for example, so we have iso vibrations, so that's like type dependency uh, up to isomorphism. So I have um, say, uh, fiber prime part along isomorphisms or equivalence in the, in the base, then uh, full Cartesian vibration, so that's the uh, simplicity, so the infinity category version of a uh, broken deep op vibration. So this models uh, a covariant type dependency, and then uh, you have left vibrations uh, which are just uh, co cartesian vibrations whose fibers are infinity group points. Um, so again, covariant transport. On this side, there's a uh, contravariant transport. And then uh, we have Kant vibrations, which is a locally constant transport. So uh, the transport will always be in, in, in equivalence. Right. And what, what will be also uh, important uh, for us today is a two-sided vibration. And I'm just talking about these three two-sided vibrations today. So it's a vibration uh, over a product, which is uh, covariant 
in one direction and contravariant in the other uh, variable, right? So this uh, is not a really uh, an implication, but it's if I project down to uh, one variable, I get a co-Cartesian vibration, and if I project down to the other variable, I get a uh, Cartesian vibration. So uh, here's some quick examples, um, right? So if we have an infinity category C, then uh, the target projection uh, from the, uh, is a co-Cartesian vibration and the source projection is a Cartesian vibration. And finally, uh, if I take both at once, then it turns out that this is a, a two-sided vibration. So to talk about universe, I, I'll have to talk about universes. And um, uh, there, so there are several universes that we can, uh, can define uh, in simplicial sets corresponding to uh, these kind of vibrations that we have. So in particular, we can uh, define uh, universes, or today I'll talk about universes for these vibrations. So there's the universe classifying small path vibrations. Um, and then the universe classifying uh, small left vibrations and the universe uh, classifying small co-cartesian vibrations. And uh, roughly speaking, so the n simplices of these simplicial sets are given by small vibrations, uh, like so, uh, with some extra coherence data to make this really into a simplicial set so to ensure some functor reality. So in particular, uh, the zero simplices of the universe of uh, Kant vibrations and the universe of left vibrations, these are small infinity group points. And uh, the zero simplices of the universe of small co-cartesian vibrations uh, are given by infinity categories. So, uh, for example, Q wants to be the infinity category of infinity categories, but of course, this is um, something that, that we need to justify. So then uh, there's this theorem. Um, so the universe I classify small Kant vibration is an infinity group point. So that's due to Kapulkin, Lamsteck, and Wawatsky. And uh, Zuzinski has shown that uh, the universe for uh, left vibrations, that's an infinity category. And then one can show that the universe of co Cartesian vibration uh, is uh, an infinity category. So, so here's um, an overview picture. So we have the following Kolbeck diagram. So this is, uh, so the universe comes uh, with the universal vibration. So that's the universal uh, co-cartesian vibration classifying small co-cartesian vibrations. And this is the universal left vibration and the universal Kant vibration. So the universal uh, Kant vibration is in particular a left vibration. So it comes with a classifying map. And um, that's basically the, the maximal infinity group point of the infinity category of infinity group points. And similarly, uh, every left vibration is in particular a co-cartesian vibration. So it comes with a classifying map. And so this is supposed to be the inclusion of the full subcategory of uh, spaces or an infinity group point. And I think I'm being a little bit inconsistent today, what I call infinity group point, what I call spaces, but it's uh, supposed to be the same thing today. So, uh, so this classifying map wants to be the inclusion of the full set category of infinity group points into the infinity category of uh, infinity categories. Uh, so just from the definition, um, that's not clear that this is the case, that this is really uh, fully faithful. And uh, so basically, uh, 
direct the universe gives us to give us a way to show this. So let's talk about universe. And um, so my idea for this talk is really talk about universe and then direct the universe and really show you that uh, it's the way you, 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 you speak about these things in, in simple set is really the same thing. So the universe uh, asserts the equivalence between uh, the identity type of the universe, right, and the type of equivalences between types. So uh, you more precisely, path induction uh, gives you a map. And uh, then uh, this is supposed to be an equivalence. So for the rest of the talk, um, when I say something about vibrations, I will either mean Khan left or co cartesian vibration. But whenever I say map of vibration, then this is supposed to mean that it preserves the right structures so in particular. We talk about a map between co cartesian vibrations, it's always supposed to mean that it preserves co cartesian uh, edges. And same thing for equivalence of vibration, the appropriate notion of uh, equivalence, which in all cases is finalized. Right? So let's translate this uh, universe axiom uh, in, in simplicial sets. So given a vibration, uh, either Kahn F or Pro Cartesian, then we can define uh, an object of equivalences, uh, which looks as follows. So the ends and indices, they are given uh, by a pair of maps uh, from uh, standard and simplex into the base. And then we also want an equivalence of vibrations when we pull back along these maps. Uh, so when we pull back P, uh, along these maps. That's the data of an n simplex as a sample simple and uh, set that that's the object of equivalences. And it comes with canonical maps, uh, which uh, give a factorization of the diagonal. So um, this map is really just really the identity where uh, I'm pulling back. Right, uh, Basically, I'm pulling back the same uh, the map, same map, and I can just put here the identity. This gives me one map, and um, this is just a projection down to either leg. And then we can make for the following definitions. So we call P uh, univalent if this is a path object in the Kahn-Quill model structure in case of Kahn vibrations and now, or if it's a path object uh, in the general structure, when we talk about left vibrations or co cartesian vibrations. So, Sorry, uh, quick. Uh, just to make yeah. sure I understood the notation, did P go from X to A? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And this, so this is this object of equivalence constructed from a fixed map P. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, so here's here's another point of view. Um, uh, so there's the canonical choice of, of path objects in, in these uh, model structures, and we can just take J as, for example, the J, the nerve of the free walking isomorphism, and then we can exponentiate uh, with J, and this gives us a path object. So here is just the constant maps, and this map is the evaluation at these objects. So this is again a uh, uh, factorization of the diagonal. And then path of action just means that we have a lift, so that's a trivial cool vibration. And um, this map is always a vibration, so we get uh, we get a lift, which is just the semantic interpretation of path of action. And then uh, we can say that uh, the vibration is a uh, univalent if this lift uh, is an equivalence. So here's theorem basically saying that all, all of these universal vibrations are in fact a univalent. So uh, again, so the universal kind of vibration is univalent. That's uh, again, 
Kapulkin Lambstein by Wolbotsky, and Denis Schaub have shown that the universal left vibration is uh, univalent, and together with Denis Schaub, we uh, show that also the universal co partition vibration is univalent. And right, so in, in homotopy type theory, that's, that's kind of all we can express. Uh, so the universe of infinity group points, right? That's that's itself an infinity group point. So it only sees uh, equivalences between types. That's all we can really, that's all the universe uh, really can say. But uh, on the other hand, uh, the universe is uh, for uh, left vibrations and co-cartesian vibrations. So, in, so basically infinity category, these, these are infinity categories. So in these universes, we do see uh, non-invertible maps between types. Um, so to express this, that, uh, that that's basically directed univalence. So then let's let's talk about directed uh, univalence. So the uh, idea is then uh, what's what should be a directed univalence axiom. Um, so in the beginning, I mentioned uh, we should replace the identity type uh, by a home type, right? And uh, directed univalence then should assert an equivalence between uh, home types and function types. Okay. So then let's uh, talk about the home type in a semantic model of um, uh, superficial sets. So given an infinity category, C say, then we can have a factorization of the diagonal. Uh, so in, uh, this time, uh, we exponentiate uh, with delta one, and that's the constant map, and then the target map, and already mentioned, uh, that this is a two-sided vibration, so in particular also an isoph vibration, but um, this is obviously uh, not a path object in the uh, in the general structure. So this models the mapping space uh, of an infinity category, uh, and it being a two-sided vibration really means that it's covariant in one variable and contravariant in the other variable. So um, to be more precise, the taking fibers at the point uh, of the product defines the mapping space. So that's uh, the quickest way in, in, point, in infinity categories to define a mapping space. And then, of course, we have uh, to do a lot of work to really uh, say something about food reality. But right, so it's kind of expressed in the fact that it's a two sided vibration. Now, on the other hand, how do we model the function type uh, in simplicial sets? And that's uh, the same thing as uh, the object of equivalences. So I start with the fixed vibration, so P from X to A. Then I can define an object of, of more of business, uh, which has uh, N simplicities given by a pair of maps uh, from the standard N syntax and then a map of vibrations already uh, n simplex. So that's the datum of an n simplex, uh, often, uh, yeah, often n simplex in this simplicial set. So if we are talking about co cartesian vibrations, uh, again, this map should preserve the co cartesian edges. And uh, as before, we have a factorization of the diagonal. Uh, which uh, this map is again having here the identity and here it's projection down to the respective legs. And uh, just to give it a name in case of the say of the universal uh, partition vibration applying this construction, um, let's call this the universal morphism classifier. And right, so let's just uh, spell this out. So a map, right, from any simplicial set, say K, to this universal morphism classifier is determined by a pair of co-partition vibration over K and a map preserving co-partition edges. 
So it's like so this function type then. Sorry, uh, I have a notational yeah. question again. If we could go back to the previous yeah. slide. So I so I remember a Q bullet is the sort of total space of the universal um, co-cartesian yeah. vibration. Um does Q bullet zero and Q bullet one mean anything? Yeah, right. So um the way you construct this uh is um you uh uh I'm gonna. I mean, I use the same notation for uh, for x two. So, obviously. Mm -hmm. so if you have, if you have a vibration, uh, uh, say uh, x to a, mm -hmm. then uh, you can pull this back along the projection. So let's say pi, and I'm calling this pullback uh, x to the square pi, right? Uh, and then if you if you basically, I mean, you can define this this object of morphisms basically for any uh, over any base. Not really, you don't have to define it over over a product. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do this over a product, then it does precisely. You know, so that's uh, you have two vibrations, so Q zero and Q one over the product. Um, and then if you build a simple set, then it does exactly uh, what I've written here. So. That, that, that explains the notation. Great. And so is that object, so the this HOM sub Q times Q thing, is that the internal HOM and the slice over Q times Q? Uh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, right. So it's it's the internal HOM and then uh, in the appropriate notion. So uh, right. So I mean, I've, I've said, so this internal HOM really recognizes that you preserve the right structure. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. So this this uh, function type then should be again be a dependent type uh, in some sense, and that's that's uh, really what we get. So it it will always be an nice vibration, um, but uh, we really want type dependency not only along uh, isomorphisms, but uh, really. Uh, in, in this two variable sense, so and, and this is actually true. So the iso vibration we get is always a two-sided vibration. So in particular, the universal morphism classifier is a two-sided vibration. Then um, we always have a lift uh, in in the in, in the square, and then uh, that's the same picture as we had for univalence, right? Uh, so, but instead of the path space, uh, we really have here uh, the space of morphisms. And then we just do the same definition as before. So we call a vibration directed univalent. If this uh, lift is in the coolest of infinity categories. So as a remark, um, so this lift that we get, uh, so how, how do we construct this? So you can really construct this out of lifting properties that you have for vibrations. Um, and actually, I mean, you don't really uh, need this upper prop of the square. This will be automatic. Uh, but you, you could also view this as some sort of instance of uh, directed path induction. And in this case, so like what, what this says is that uh, whenever you have a two-sided vibration uh, and you have given a map uh, on the identities, then you can always lift this to a map uh, on all morphisms. So that's, yeah, um, uh, that's how I'd like to think about uh, direct path induction. And uh, so interestingly enough, this, this version of direct path induction that appears very early on in, in uh, some early paper of, of McLean, categorical algebra, and there it's called the diagonal unita lemma. Just fun fact. Okay. Uh, yes. So let's just unpack this for the universal co-partition vibrations. Uh, what's happening here? 
right? So we have we have this lip, uh, and what's the point uh, in in this product? It's just a pair of infinity categories, scheme, say, and the fiber over this. Uh, of uh, the universal morphism classifier over this point turns out uh, to be uh, the functor category in simple sets, but it, it's not really the functor category, it's the maximal group point. Yes. The maximal group point uh, of the functor category. And on the other hand, uh, if you look then at the induced map of fibers, and that's exactly uh, a map from the mapping space uh, of the infinity category. Infinity category is mapping to, uh, well, to the function type, the maximum group point of the function type. That in the end, that's all we can express. So we don't really see uh, the uh, the functor category because we're only talking about the infinity one category of the infinity categories. Uh, that's all we get. So, um, um, right. And then, then there's the theorem um, that the universal lab vibration and uh, the universal co Cartesian vibration, they are directly unidirectional. So, right, um, so in particular, right, uh, that this map will be in equivalence. So if this that's an equivalence, uh, and it's in particular fiberwise in equivalence. But um, uh, in fact, because there are two sided vibrations. Equals are really recognized point one, point one, so otherwise. Uh, it's, it's kind of the point where we have a map really of dependent types. So we should be able to check point wise where we have new equals or not. So uh, I like to give uh, a sketch of proof of, of this. So again, so these are um, the maps above. There are uh, Two sided vibrations, and it's enough to check fiber wise that the comparison map is in equivalence. So that this uh, uh, map is in equivalence of spaces. And so, how to go about this proof? Um, we uh, consider uh, the functor. From the homotopy category of, of the infinity category, of infinity categories of homotopy of Q to the homotopy category of uh, simplicial set uh, with the Jarmo structure. So um, that's kind of bad notation. So this homotopy category means really something else than, than this. But eventually it'll mean the same. And right, so that's like an instance of the Grotenik construction. So uh, an object in Q, right, that's just a map from delta zero to Q. So it classifies a co cartesian vibration over the point. So that's just classifying an infinity category C. And on morphisms, um, well, we already have a map that's given by this direct path function. If we look at it cyclewise, uh, we, have, we get this map, and uh, if we take pi zero of this, that's exactly the home set of this category. And if we think of uh, simplicial set with general structure, and then we look at uh, the maximum group points of the of the functor categories, and then take pi zero, this is this will compute as the home category of this model category, and um, so that's exactly what's happening here. So we get a map of morphisms, and then you have to do a little bit of work um, to show that, that all of this is compatible with, with composition. 
So, um, and, and the way that you do this is um, basically how you would split a, a group meek vibration. So you find a replacement where it's actually strict up to equivalence. So that's why we get a functor and homotopy categories. And then the essential result that, that, that we need um, is uh, the following theorem that um, we have an equivalence of categories if we exponentiate everything uh, with the simplicial set A. So I could have written this. Uh, Right, and then um, uh, here I should explain that's uh, that's the homotopy category of uh, the Cartesian model structure on. On this kind of object. So it's marked simplicial sets and fiber and objects there are co cohesion vibrations over A. And um, you get this uh, equivalence of categories. And so the functor in this, in this direction here is again this Grotony construction. You start with the map 2Q, it classifies the co cohesion vibration. So this gives you the map on objects. And um, the map of morphisms, that's really the same as given here. And then you just take uh, basically, which turns out that you can exponentiate with A and get the right map uh, for this co Cartesian model structure. In the base, do you have a natural or? No, I have, I have a sharp. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I deleted too many things. Um, structure. Right. So I want to make sure that I have over each edge, I have a co Cartesian edge. Right. Um, right. And because we have this basically for all simplicial sets A, uh, what we'll get is that we have an isomorphism if we take pi zero because we have an equivalent of categories. Um, so we get uh, an isomorphism on pi zero uh, for all A, uh, which implies uh, that we actually get an equivalence of spaces. So that's kind of the trick uh, to show this. And that's direct, so that's direct at unit levels. So, right, so to, to Two basic ingredients really are recognizing that the uh, universal morphism classifier is really a two sided vibration, so you can check things fiber wise. Um, and then they have this sort of straightening, unstraightening on up to homotopy. And then, right, and then use this trick that everything is compatible with exponentiation. Here's, here's a fun fact, um, another one. Uh, we use univalence for this, <laughs> um, at least for, to prove that uh, this functor is fully faithful. Uh, we have to prove univalence of this universal co Cartesian vibration first, and then use this to prove this equivalence, uh, and then derive from this uh, directed univalence. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I if we can prove directly univalence first, which would then imply univalence. But uh, yeah, that that's that's in the end how we, how we did it. And uh, another remark. Um, so this this proof shows really a close connection between directed univalence uh, and the straightening and unstraightening influence. And in fact, uh, directed univalence is really equivalent uh, to this equivalence of categories. 
Okay, so if we have direct and universe, and if we look at, we can exponentiate uh, by a simple set A. And then if we look at the fibers, uh, this tells us really that the, the mapping, uh, the home sets are uh, isomorphic. And on the other hand, if we have this, then we can prove direct and universe. And with some effort, uh, we can improve like the whole straightening and straightening uh, equ equivalence, which in particular implies that um, this universe Q here is equivalent to the localization of simplicial sets by the dual equivalence. So this really justifies that this universe Q is the infinity category uh, of infinity categories. And you notice um, if you take A to be the point, we're like, we're almost there, right? Um, we have, uh, I mean, what we want is really a function from Q to, to this, uh, this localization. And you see, what we already know is that um, if we could define a functor, it will be essentially subjective by definition. And then this directed universe uh, tells us that the mapping spaces uh, are uh, equivalent, right? So if we think of this, so like in, in the enriched sense of it, um, we really have uh, essentially subjective and fully faithful in the homotopical sense. So here it's almost almost there that this is clear as an equivalence. Um, the point is that we, we don't have a functor to begin with. We don't have a functor really from, from Q to the localization uh, to begin with. So moral, morally, we're already done, but uh, then the extra effort is really constructing this functor uh, uh, to compare these to the localization and then the infinity categories. Then we can also give a characterization of uh, directed univalent vibrations, uh, which resembles this uh, characterization of univalent vibrations. Thank you to uh, David Gebner and Joachim Koch. So recall that a vibration is directed univalent uh, if the lift in the square is an equivalence uh, of infinity categories. And then we have the following theorem. So um, a small co-cartesian vibration is directed univalent uh, if and only if its classifying map is fully faithful. So, and now that's more or less uh, easy to prove. And it's just contemplating uh, this diagram for a while and uh, right so that's so let's let's have a look at this so this is the universal morphism classified and if we have a small vibration um, this object of morphism uh, this one here is just the pullback so this uh, is a pullback diagram and now uh, we know that the uh, that the universal uh, co-cartesian vibration um, is uh, direct and univalent. So we do have here uh, an equivalence. So in particular, a fiberwise equivalence. And so then, what we're saying is fully faithfulness really means that uh, this map is fiber-wise equivalence because these, the fibers or point really compute the mapping spaces. So fully faithfulness is uh, this being fiber-wise equivalence. And on the other hand, uh, the vibration that we started with, so P is direct at uni if uh, this map uh, is an equivalence. 
the fiber wire circular the codes. So then uh, take fibers of this whole diagram. And it uh, reduces to a two out of three. Uh, for equivalences. So here we have this characterization that if you're given a small uh, vibration and you want to see if it's uh, uh, directly univalent or not, then it's just simply a matter of uh, checking. Well, simply it's a matter of checking whether or not it's fully faithful. So it can go now in both directions. So it's a corollary. Um, we get that. Uh, the classifying map of the universal left vibration is fully faithful because it is, uh, well, because it is directed universal. And uh, but on the other hand, uh, let's look back. Uh, this diagram. Uh, this is not directed universe. So really we see something with, that we cannot express in, in homotopy type theory. And right, so because maximum, inclusion of the maximum infinity group part is uh, rarely uh, fully faithful unless uh, it's an infinity group part itself. So we have this uh, nice characterization of, um, of directed uh, uh, univalent uh, vibrations. And right, so I'm actually already at the, at the end of my talk, uh, so I expected it, I expected it to be much slower. So let's see, uh, what, uh, what else can I say? Uh, I think I have around 15 minutes left. Okay. Um, um, so then let's just uh, improvise for a bit, because why not? Uh, right, so maybe let's, let's talk about how you can improve this um, to uh, uh, a full straightening and straightening. How to get to a full straightening. And straightening equals. I hope I hope this is um, readable. Um, if not, let me know. Uh, so, so the idea is, um, but we cannot, we cannot really avoid, uh, straightening and unstraightening, um, uh, but, uh, we can do it in a much simpler way. So we, we, what we can do, uh, is we can look at the functor category, so that as a one category from, uh, so that's some a small uh, one category. And into uh, Mark simplicious sets with the Cartesian model structure. And again, I'm ignoring sizes here. Uh, so we have this. And um, right, so uh, we take this with the projective model structure and then you just have to show uh, uh, that this induces a coolant equivalence uh, with mark simplicial sets uh, over the product. So that's a coolant equivalence. And so, uh, 
then uh, taking homotopy categories. Get a map. Uh, to uh, the homotopy category, right? Uh, and here, uh, we already know that this is equivalent um, to the homotopy category of uh, functors from I to functors from A to Q. And uh, this is a localization in the one categorical sense. And uh, so now, uh, well, what we want to do is we plug in for this i uh, the simplicial set uh, over a itself. And then um, uh, again with, with the respective sizes, uh, and then we can put the identity here and uh, get in particular uh, an object in here, which is then a functor from. Uh, Uh, here or the nerve of it to uh, this thing. And then you have to check uh, that this uh, preserves equivalences. And uh, ah, thank you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> So then uh, we get an induced functor uh, from this. So that's the infinity categorical localization here. And uh, turns out uh, sorry, this preserves cool limits and is uh, an equivalence on homotopy categories. And that's enough. Uh, to show that it's an equivalence of infinity categories. So that's, that's, that's the idea. And so um, you have to show that uh, this is co-complete. So you have to show that Q is co-complete. Um, and this, this uses, uh, this uses this equivalent equivalence. And then you have localization theory, which uh, is, tells you that if you're coming from a model category, then the infinity categorical localization is complete. Check that it's preserves co limits and check that it's in close on homotopy categories. Okay. Uh, but, right, so that's the idea how to improve all of this to um, an equivalence of infinity categories. And this justifies that. Q is the infinity category of infinity categories. Uh, and it 
almost works inside of simplicial set. So we never really had to use like another model with many categories. So for example, uh, simplicial categories, that's the usual way how you would prove straightening and unstraightening. So we can avoid this here. Um, and I mean, we have to use marks of the sets to get the right thing, but we can avoid this other strict uh, notion of infinity one categories. Uh, we cannot avoid some sort of straightening and straightening, uh, which again is this cool equivalence that we're given here, but um, it's technically uh, less hard, I'd say, than involving how to cure nerves. Okay, but then I think uh, I'll stop here and uh, thank you uh, for the attention. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Uh, so we're going to do our visual silent applause. Thank you. Great. And uh, now's the question period. Um, maybe I will ask another <laughs> question and then I'll let other people ask questions. Um, uh, so, um, if let's let's kind of go back to ordinary univalence for a second. Um, yeah. So, if you're trying to construct some sort of categorical model of homotopy type theory, and you've constructed some thing you think is the universal vibration, and you want to show that it is univalent, uh, you know, one strategy is to uh, prove instead, you know, let's say it's a model category or something that you have the equivalence extension property in yeah. this model category. Um, but there's a technical prerequisite for the sufficiency of this equivalence extension thing to give you univalence, um, which is sometimes called realignment uh, yeah. um, and ha has some other names. Is there is that a part of this story somehow? There's some sort of realignment you need to check before verifying directed univalence, or is that just kind of not relevant? Uh, so, so your question is, Basically, how, how this univalence enters into this uh, proof of direct univalence? Um, uh, maybe that's my maybe that would be a better formulation of my question. Sure. Yeah, please tell me uh, that. Yeah, so, so ultimately, um, uh, let's go back to um, uh, uh, this thing here. Um, so the, the problem here is fully faithful, and uh, somehow what you uh, uh, get using this, um, sorry, uh, basically, we you know, see how I want to phrase this. All right. So basically what you get with this construction where you, where you take a, a, a map, like a classifier map, and then take your search for classifier break, and is, um, here in the image here uh, of co-classifier vibrations, you only hit it uh, up to equivalence. So then um, basically, for any vibration, if you go through uh, these constructions, uh, you get sort of like a natural equivalence. And then to show that it's it's uh, it's really full, for example, um, univalence tells us that uh, these equivalences are already hit by our construction. And so we get fullness by taking the composition of, of this outer thing. Uh, that's, that's how univalence enters for, for fullness and for faithfulness it's, it's the same thing but um, you take like an extra direction but again you use uh, univalence to sort of like see that all the equivalences that uh, that you see there because you can all the only thing that you can do is define it up to equivalence and you have to make sure uh, that you you really do see all of these equivalences um, right so I'm not sure if I did answer your question or answered something conventional to that. Oh, that was a helpful comment. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great. Other questions for Kim? Uh, can I ask a random question? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, so uh, it's really uh, just a speculation. Uh, as a complete outsider, I see the emphasis on the one simplices, and I'm wondering if 
there anybody has had any ideas about what would happen if we wanted to bring in higher dimensional syntheses. So instead of J, use higher dimensional analogs of J, instead of the path space, use higher dimensional path spaces. And then instead of talking about the endpoints, talk about cones. Um, okay, I mean, I think, yeah. So um, somehow uh, you see this in this uh, directed uh, universe thing, um, right, is that uh, here, we would like to see it really the full functor category. Mm -hmm. And we don't see it. And basically that's because it's an infinity one category. So we do see uh, the morphisms by mapping out of delta one. Mm. So if we like want to move up in dimensions, uh, um, it seems to me that the way it works that if you say have some version of infinity two categories, you also only see like the uh, infinity two category factors. So if you really want like to the full directed universe, whatever that means, uh, without taking some uh, dimension below in this target, you would have to move to like infinity infinity categories. So uh, and then uh, if say if you want to move up dimensions, then you get not delta one, but you need to take like suspensions of delta one uh, to see the higher. Uh, the higher uh, morphisms. So the n morphisms say you need to sort of like take the n suspension of, of delta one, uh, which, yeah. I, I just want to say, oh my God, I, I think you're answering a question very different from the one I was asking. Okay. I, you don't, I don't mind, but uh, I wasn't at all speculating about infinity two categories. I was just anchored in infinity one categories. And in a sense, I was, um, asking if we, you know, an alternate way to access the um, the sub, I don't know what people call this uh, little signal, uh, this notation on the, the infinity groupoid of the functor category. What's mm -hmm. that little, how do people say that symbol? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's why I avoided saying it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Um, that, uh, so what all I was asking is here, as I said, there's there's a heavy emphasis on thinking in terms of just maps from one thing to one thing. And I'm just speculating about whether it might be illuminating to look at the full nerve and not just at zero and one sympathies. Uh, um, yeah, so, right. Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the fact uh, that we see uh, um, like everything, but just mapping out of very simple things yeah. is uh, a good thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say. So um, basically, I mean, we, we can see like infinity characters just by mapping out of like these very low dimensional things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and that makes life easy. Mm. So Kim, I don't know if you can see the chat, but there is a question there. All right. Do you have it open? Um, yes, I see it. Yeah. Um, so asking something about uh, uh, profunctors. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm parsing this correctly. So uh, what? Would this make sense instead of all non cofactorship vibrations together with some universe of pro functors? Um, I don't know what this means. Um, can, uh, can you somehow elaborate on, on this? Or if someone else uh, understands uh, this question, maybe. Maybe the question is a, class a classifier for, for a a broader class of vibrations that doesn't require Cartesianness. 
Uh, okay, so something like like um, isofibrate, so classifying using isofibrations, um, right? So um, uh, so I think so. Like the the classifier for isofibrations, it, it should be like the infinity two category of profiles where you have objects infinity category and like uh, uh, morphisms profiles, but this is genuinely an infinity two category, so it's not really accessible in this language that we have for infinity categories. Uh, so again, yeah, it, we have to move a dimension up um, to really express this pro factor universe, um, specifying this thing. So that's, that's kind of the problem. But then maybe, yeah. So uh, the, the process of moving or, or sort of obtaining a theory of Cartesian vibrations by just dualizing the theory of co-Cartesian vibrations is a little bit subtle. I was wondering if you could tell us about the universal uh, co-Cartesian, sorry, the universal Cartesian vibration and its version of directed univalence. Um, right, I, I have not thought about this and um, so, Right. So this, this process of dualizing a co-creation vibration into a Cartesian vibration is unfortunately not just taking off. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, really. Uh, I, I have not thought about this. But so I, I think what, what should be true is that the universal morphism classifier will also be a uh, two-sided vibration. Um, I think maybe yeah, maybe the um, the variances switch in the variables, and then yeah. So I, I my, well, my, my guess would be that um, you have to somehow dualize this thing, and uh, what you get here if you plug in like the universal Cartesian vibration, this would be automatically dualized, and then that uh, that would be directly universal for Cartesian vibration. So somehow dualizing each variable here um, would do the uh, trick, maybe. Uh, yeah, your construction looks so symmetrical; it's hard to imagine yeah. what a dual form would be. I mean, one, you know, one. Uh, um, so it, uh, you know, if we're thinking about it, um, you know, kind of from the point of view of the like straightening, unstraightening. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, then there would there's an op, um, mm -hmm. kind of in the sort of functor space uh, mm -hmm. on the functor space variable. But here, since you're taking the groupoid core of that anyway, maybe it just isn't there. Uh, um, and so I, anyway, I don't know. I'm, um, yeah, I mean, I think that if uh, if we really think about how to prove that this is uh, two side vibration works. Um, then I think if you if you plug in a Cartesian vibration, then it would flip uh, the variance in these variables. So uh, as as is, so this is um, let me think that's Cartesian in this variable and co-Cartesian in this variable. And if you do the Cartesian universe Cartesian thing, this would flip. Mm -hmm. And then right, and then this would make things covariant here and contravariant here. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> anyway, great. Thanks. I'll ask another question. Um, so in the in the quill and model structure in some postal sets, the way the universe is constructed there. There's a trick done where um, I think the all the fibers are always assumed to be totally ordered. Um, mm -hmm. Is there some similar trick that needs to be done to construct these other universes? Well, yeah, so that's right. So um, right, that's it's the same trick. So I mean, you can start with the universe of, of small sets first, and then take sub-objects of it. Uh, 
and then to construct this universe of more simplified sets, and then you have to do some tricks. So that's what I meant with these extra coherence data. So I think the way the initial likes to do it is uh, that an n simplex of this universe thing is uh, a map, and then a choice of, of pullbacks. Um, or you can do this um, ordering trick uh, to sort of like rectify uh, putting back uh, these kind of things. So, I mean, there's there's other possibilities. Uh, and then you will have a universe of small subject sets. And then you take the sub objects of it, you spend by co Cartesian left or Kant Cartesian, so uh, your preferred flavor. Um, right. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have one small question. Yeah. So uh, we can see the straightening on straightening equivalence giving us a way to promote um, functors from a category into cat into some sort of subcategory of a uh, cat, non full subcategory um, of Cartesian vibrations. Yes. It seems like this should be suitably natural in the indexing category. Yes. Um, can we? sort of make this formal as a functor from small cats to very big cats or even just the low dimensional instances? Uh, I can elaborate if that was unclear. Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> right, so um, I, I, I'm wondering if uh, we have a functor from A to cat and we can re-index A to get A prime. Uh, yes, okay. And we can do the same thing on the other side where we consider categories living over A or uh, co Cartesian vibrations living over A, and you can pull them back to get something living over A prime. Yeah. yeah. Two straightening equivalences. Uh, yeah. The square. Yes. 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 Um, right. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, so the straightening thing will be uh, natural in, in this sense. Very so cool. on one side, it's right. Uh, right. Uh, so the post composition or pre composition and the other side is. Uh, pulling back, um, right? So, and then this this uh, straightening uh, unstraightening equivalence that we do, we have to, it's natural in the sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's let's thank Kim again. Um, so, yeah, thanks again for having me. Great, and we will be uh, back uh, in two weeks at a uh, uh, confusing time. So please um, beware of uh, daylight savings time switches and uh, um, with uh, Daniel Greitzer. <laughs>